We are in a meaning crisis in some real sense, cataclysmic consequence of the death of God, let's say. What should orient you in life? It's, well, certainly the, the willingness to dare to accept res radical responsibility. That's a, good, that's a good answer to the question of how do you find meaning in life? You could try just doing the best you possibly can for other people. And I don't mean in a sense of bitter self-immolation, you know, that, that's just not, that's not going to sustain itself. It's not a good strategy, but you could just try that and see what happens. It's like, and you, you kind of know what's going to happen because there'll be people who take advantage of you, but they even might learn with time. Anyone capable of shame is certainly going to be shamed by the realization that they've betrayed someone who's been good to them. And insofar as they have any capacity for shame whatsoever, even the worst of people can find a pathway to redemption through that kind of shame, but that won't even emerge unless there's been someone who is good to them that they, that they could betray. Now, and one of the things that struck me from reading Carl Jung, again, this psych, Swiss psychoanalyst who was a stunning genius, he believed that he was very obsessed with what had happened in Germany in, in the 1930s and the 1940s, and, and then also with the emergence of the potential for nuclear annihilation after the Second World War. And his hypothesis was something like we have to become as good as we are technologically powerful and right now we're more technologically powerful than we are good and he believed that was in part because our technological enterprise had expanded in some sense exponentially since the since the dawn of the scientific revolution but that our ethical wisdom had stagnated or while well, stagnated is good enough, and that's not acceptable because as you, you become more powerful, you better become better because otherwise that power will, your foolishness will, you'll be unable to control the power that you've developed and it will turn against you as a consequence of your own sin. That's a perfectly good way of thinking about it. And so that struck me as highly credible, especially after I'd read a lot about totalitarian states and the fact that the reason totalitarian states can maintain themselves, so that would be definitely the use of power against our own power against ourselves, the totalitarian state. The reason those states sustain themselves is because every individual in those states lies about everything all the time. So it's a direct consequence of individual sin. Now that's not all it is, but it, that's, that's a lot of what it is that's for sure. And so I felt that the pathway forward into the, a world of unlimited human technological ability was through the radical renovation of the individual psyche, as radical a renovation as the technological renovation itself. And we're playing that out now. We're, we're going to find out, probably in the course of most of our lifetimes whether or not we can manage that. And we're pretty technologically powerful and we're getting more technologically powerful all the time and very, very quickly. And so that means we better get better fast at the same time.